This class is dedicated Le'ilu Nishmas Norit Bas Avram Halevi. This sikha is from Lukot HaSichas, Chelek Chof, Parshas Vayishlach, Sicha Aleph. And the topic of the sikha is that in this week's Parsha we learn how Esav kissed Yaakov when he finally met him. And in the sikha, the Rebbe will analyze the Rashi that presents two opinions regarding whether this kiss was real or not. Number two, in the process, we will learn what question was really bothering Rashi. Because when we look at the Rashi, we'll have a lot of questions. And then the Rebbe will explain what was really bothering Rashi. And then, number three, once we understand what was really bothering Rashi, then all the questions will automatically be answered. So all the questions we have on the Rashi are because we won't understand properly what was bothering him. And we'll have questions, why did Rashi say this? Why didn't he say that? But once we understand what was really bothering Rashi, it'll make perfect sense exactly what Rashi did say, as well as what Rashi did not say. The Torah tells us that when Yaakov finally met Esav, Vayaretz, Esav Lekrosei, Esav ran towards him, Vayichapkeyu, and he hugged him, Vayipal al Tzavarav, and he fell on his neck, Vayishakeyu, and he kissed him, Vayifku, and they cried. So Rashi says on the word Vayichapkeyu, and he hugged him, Nizgal Galu Rachamov. His compassion was moved, Kishara'ohu, Mishtachave, Kol, Hishtachavois, Halalu. When he saw him bowing, all these bowings, then Rashi says on Vaishakeyu and he kissed him, Nokud Olov. There are dots on this word. There are those who argue about this matter, about the word Vaishakeyu, Bibraisa the Sifri, and Abraisa and Sifri. The first opinion is, There are those who expanded this Nikud to say, that he didn't kiss him with his whole heart. That's what the Nikud is coming to tell us. Then there's a second opinion. Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Yechai, Rabbi Shimon ben Yechai said, Halacha hi biyadua she Esav sein el Yaakov. It's a halacha, it's known that Esav hates Yaakov. Ela she nichmeru rachamov ba Esav shah. It's just that his emotions, his compassion was moved at that time. Unishakei b'chol libay, and he kissed him with his whole heart. And the Rebbe proceeds to ask many questions on this Rashi. Number one, the Rebbe asks, how come Rashi doesn't explain Vayechabkeyu in such a way that it should fit with the second Pirush? That just like the kiss wasn't real, also the hug wasn't real. Number two, why does Rashi need to bring both Purushim on Vayishakeyu and in a way that they're both equal? Like the Rebbe explains many times that if there's two Purushim on something and one is better than the other, then Rashi brings the better one first and the one that's not as good second. But if they're both equal, then what Rashi will do is he'll make an introduction and say there are two opinions, meaning there are two opinions and both of them are equally good. And that's what he does here. And so the question is, why does Rashi bring both down and in such a way that they're both equal if only the first explanation explains the Nikud? Only according to the first explanation to understand why there's nikud here, why are there dots on the word, to tell you that it wasn't a real kiss. But according to the second Purush, it was a real kiss. So what's the need for the dots? Just don't have the dots, and we'll, see, we'll read that he kissed him, and it means he kissed him for real. Now, some of Hashem explain, that's why Rajbi first says, meaning to tell us that if not for the dots, you would think that the kiss wasn't real. The dots come to tell us that it was real. But the problem with that is that the purpose of the dots is always there to weaken the word. Over here it's doing the opposite. It's strengthening the word. And then the Rebbe asks five other questions based on this that we find this Medrash and other places as well. We find it in Bracious Rabbah and in Avastar Rabbi Nassim. And the Rebbe explains that in Bracious Rabbah, one of the explanations is that he wanted to bite him. So that we understand what Rashi didn't bring, because then the dots are not just weakening the word, they're entirely erasing it. But how about the first explanation that's brought in Bracious Rabbi from Abshim ben Alazar, where he says, that he did kiss him with his whole heart, just like Rashbi. How come he doesn't bring it from Bracious Rabbi? And also in Ovis the Rav Nassim, it's even better, because over there it's very, very brief. Either it says, that's one opinion, it teaches us that he didn't kiss him. Uh, for real, and Rabbi Shimon ben Lazar Eimer, Neshikazu Shel Emes. This kiss is a real kiss. It's a true kiss. V'kulon Einan Shel Emes, and all the others are not real. So why 
does Rashi bring from Safri and not from Bereshus Rabbah, and even more from Avis the Rabbi Nossin? Number two, not only does Rashi bring it from Safri, he tells us it's from Safri and from Abraisa. Why does he have to mention where it's from? Number three, why does Rashi have to mention that it's Rashbi? R- R- Rashi only mentions who it's from if there is a question that a Talmud Mamulach, a sharp student, is going to ask. So what issue over here is Rashi coming to answer by mentioning the name of Rashbi? Number four, why does he have to add the beginning words of Rashbi? Halacha biyadu asha esav sein aliyakiv. Why not like Avast Reb Nassim? Just say that it was a real kiss. And the final question, which the Rebbe really only asks a little later, but it's part of these questions, is the the main girsa in the Safri is not she she nichmeru rachamov, but rather she nehepchu. Not that he became emotional and excited, but rather that his feelings turned around; they were transformed. So why does Rashi bring the less common girsa? So in brief, the five questions are, number one, why take it from Sifri and not from the other sources, which, which are just as good and maybe even better? Number two, why does Rashi have to tell us that it's from Sifri and also specify it's a brysa in Sifri? Number three, why mention the name of Rashbi? Number four, why the first words of Rashbi? Halacha be'idu ha'she'es of Sin al-Yakiv? And number five, why use the word nechmeru and not nehebchu, which, which is more common in the girsayas that are out there? The Rebbe says that l'cha'ira, you could answer that according to both opinions, the nikud weakens the word. And the difference is that according to the first pirush, it does it literally, that he didn't kiss him with his whole heart. And according to the second pirush, it weakens what you would think. Meaning that since halacha be yidu ashe Esav sein al-Yaakov, it's halacha, it's known, that Esav hates Yaakov, you'd think it wasn't real. So you would look at this Vaisha Kayu and say it wasn't a real kiss. And so it tells you that it was. Meanings, meaning it's taking it out of the meaning that you would otherwise give it over here. And like the Rebbe emphasizes that the dots are not just on the part of the word that says by Yishak that he kissed him, but also on the who. He kissed him. Who we're talking about over here is also important. We're talking about Esav and Yaakov. And Esav kissing Yaakov is expected, it's expected to be that it's not a real kiss. And so even according to the second parish, it's weakening it, meaning it's taking it out of what it means. And this will explain to us, number one, the Nikud fits with both Purushim, because both of them are saying that the Nikud is taking it out and away from what you would think otherwise. Number two, it fits better with the second parish, that the Nikud is on the whole word, so there's an advantage to the second parish. Number three, it explains to us why he brings from Safri, because only in Safri does it have this introduction, Halacha biyadu of Sein Eli which then explains to us how the Nikud is taking it out of what you would think otherwise. And number four, why he brings the name of Rashbi, since Rashbi is Deirish Taim Adekra, meaning Rashbi always looks at the context. He doesn't just translate it literally, he looks at the context, which over here, the context is what's important, that we're talking about Esav and Yaakov, and you, you'd expect that the kiss wasn't with his whole heart. And the Nikud is taking it out of that meaning, and out of that meaning, and telling us that it was with his whole heart. However, the Rebbe says that this answer doesn't really fit for four reasons. Number one, because the Nikud always makes the word itself weaker. In the first, the very beginning, we said that the Nikud is coming to tell us that it's a real kiss. You would think it wasn't real. It is a real kiss. In this answer that we're saying now, we're saying that it's making it weaker from its current context. But you, the Nikud doesn't make it weaker from the context. It actually makes the word itself weaker. And here it's making it stronger. Number two, we still don't understand why I mentioned that it's a bright sense of free. Number three, Although we see why Rashbi had to mention that Esav hates Yaakov, but why the need for the word halacha, that it's considered a halacha? And number four, this is a question we mentioned earlier, but the Rebbe really only introduces it now, and that is, why does Rashi pick the not as common word? It's not found in most Gersois that nechmeru rachmav, the compassion of Esav was nechmeru, which means it got heated up, it got excited, and not nehebchu, that it was transformed, it turned around. 
how come Rashi uses the word Shenech Meru, which is the less common Gersa? And now we come to the key of the Sicha. So this is going to lead into something else, which will lead into a third thing, which will then lead into answering all of the questions. And the Rebbe says the explanation of all of this is as follows. Rashi isn't coming to answer the Nikud on the word Vaishakeyu. When we look at Rashi, it seems that Rashi is coming to answer why are there dots, why is there Nikud on this word? Because Rashi says, Nukud Olav, there are dots on this word. And then he says there are two opinions regarding these dots. So it seems like Rashi is addressing and explaining why are there dots here. Says the Rebbe that Rashi is not coming to answer the Nikud on the word Vaishakeyu. As we find that Rashi doesn't explain every Nikud. That's not what Rashi does. There are words that have Nikud, and Rashi doesn't explain it. So what's going on over here? Why do we find, like over here, Rashi sometimes does explain the Nikud? So it's just that if there's a difficulty in Pshut HaShemikra that can be answered and connected to the Nikud, then Rashi will bring down the Nikud. So there's something else different over here that's bothering Rashi and not the dots on the words. So that's the first thing we need to establish, that Rashi is not coming to answer why there are dots on the word. So what was Rashi's question? If Rashi is not bothered by the Nikud, what is he bothered by that he presents this explanation for? And once we know what he was bothered by, then we'll understand everything that Rashi said. And we won't have any questions on it. Because only what he said will answer that question. The question Rashi has over here is, how did Esav have such a big change of heart? That he went from such great hate to such great love. We see that Esav over here, it's so many years later. Yaakov went to the yeshiva of Aver for 14 years. He worked by Lovin for 20 years. It's 34 years later, and still Esav is in the same hatred, and he's coming towards Yaakov with 400 people ready to battle him. So how do we understand this, that Esav went from such a great hatred towards Yaakov to expressing such great love? And to this Rashi says, this that Esav hugged Yaakov was indeed an extraordinary event. And according to all opinions, he hugged him with his full heart. Because of the excitement and the emotion of the moment, he completely gave Yaakov a wholehearted hug. However, when it comes to Vayishakeyu, that Esav kissed Yaakov, there it doesn't make sense to say that it was real. And that's what Rashi comes to explain. And like the Rebbe elaborates in the Sicha, that even a, like a, a child knows from the love of his parents, when they give him a kiss, how much deeper it is that a kiss means that the person can't express themselves with words and they can't even express themselves with a hug and they have to come to a kiss. So to say that Esav kissed Yaakov with his whole heart, that Rashi says doesn't make sense. And therefore Rashi is telling us on that there is Nikod over here. There are dots on the word to lessen, to weaken what it means that he gave him a kiss. He didn't. The kiss is not a real, real kiss. And there's two opinions over here about this. What does it mean it's not a real kiss? One is that he didn't kiss him with his whole heart. On a simple level, the kiss wasn't done with a full heart. And the second one of the Rashbi is that it wasn't real because it was only in the moment that he got emotional. And to emphasize this, he says, It wasn't a real thing because it didn't come from who Esav was. It was just the excitement of the moment that because of that, he kissed him with his whole heart. And like the Rebbe elaborates in the Sicha about what Halacha is, how Halacha is something which can never change. And even if there is something like Elio Bar Carmel, that temporarily a Halacha is suspended, it's just that the for fulfillment and the performance of the halacha is suspended, but the halacha is still fully there and always remains the same and has never really changed. And so it comes out that the nikud is coming here because of the question, how could it be that Esav kissed Yaakov and came to such a great love? The answer is it's not a real kiss, either because it wasn't done with his full heart or because it's not really connected to the true identity and the true feelings of Esav and it was just something that was temporary in the moment. So at this point, already two questions are answered. How come Rashi doesn't explain Vayichabkeyu to fit with the second Purush? Because according to both Purushim, the Vayichabkeyu was 100% real. We also know how come Rashi brings the words Halacha B'yidosh Yisav Sina Liyakiv because that explains to us how the kiss wasn't a real kiss because it wasn't really connected to the true identity of Esav. 
But now it's understood furthermore. Another three things, and the other ones will be explained later. Number one, why Rashi doesn't bring Ovis to Rabbi Nassim, because it wasn't real. Ovis to Rabbi Nassim is saying that it was a real kiss. According to both Purushim and Sifri, it wasn't a real kiss. Number two, how come Rashi, Rashi says, Shenech Maru, we said it's the less common girsa, and not Shenebchu, which is the more common one, because it was an emotional time and not a real thing. Like we said, Nech Maru means that it was heated up because of the excitement in the moment. Nebchu means that he changed. Esav did not change. It was just the excitement of the moment. And also we understand why Rashi says it's an Abraisa and Sifri, to strengthen the halacha aspect of it. First of all, Sifri and is, is halacha, as opposed to the Medrash Rabba and Ovest Rav Nassim, and a Brisa is a teaching of halacha. So Rashi wants to emphasize that this, that Esav really hates Yaakov, is not some drash. It is a complete and total and very concrete reality. And so the kiss that he had in the moment is not really connected to who he was, and it wasn't fully real as a result. The Rebbe continues and asks, what is it that forces Rashi to say the second Pirush that Esav kissed Yaakov with his whole heart? Especially since in that Pirush you sort of have two opposites. On one hand you have Rashbi saying, Halacha b'yidur she Esav sein al Yaakov, that it's a halacha and something so deeply connected to Esav that he hates Yaakov. And on the other hand, over here it was a real kiss. Whereas the first opinion doesn't say Halacha b'yidur she Esav sein al Yaakov. And he says it wasn't a real kiss. So why does Rashi feel the need to bring the second Pirush, especially since the Pirush has an added difficulty in it? They have to say both that it's a halacha that Esav hates Yaakov, and also that this time it was a real kiss. And the Rebbe explains that the reason is because throughout the whole story of Esav meeting Yaakov, we see that Esav was very emotional. First of all, it says that he cried. And then it says, he didn't want to take anything from Yaakov. And then he even offered, I'll give you people from my camp to be with you. And on a simple level, it seems like that was all sincere and wholehearted. And so it's difficult to say he didn't really mean it. And this now answers our second question. Why does Rashi bring the second Pirush? And not only does he bring it, but he gives it, he says that it's the same good as the first as the first Pirush. So why he brings it, we know, because both of them are minimizing and lessening the kiss. But why say they're both the same? Because if we look at the story up to this point, it seems like the kiss wasn't real because of all the hatred that Esav had to Yaakov. So that's why the first Pirush is better than the second. However, if we look at everything that happened afterwards, how he cried and he didn't take any of the things that he offered him and even offered to help him, then it seems like it was a real kiss. So each of them has the same exact difficulty. The first parish fits with everything up to this point, but then what it says later on, it doesn't fit with. And the second parish fits with everything that's said later on, but it doesn't fit with the feelings that we see Ace of Hatiyakov up to this point. There's one final question, and that is that a Talmud Mamulach can still ask about this coming from Rashbi, who was the one who said, Allah How do we understand that the very opinion, that of Rashbi, who says, that it's a halacha, it's such a deep thing in Esav that he hates Yaakov, he's the one that says that over here when it says, it means a real kiss. How do we understand that paradox, those two opposites coming together? And Rashi answers this by telling us this is the opinion of the Rajbi, he tells us the name of this opinion. As we find in Rajbi's own life, that he was in a time of great Xeris in general, and specifically on himself, like we find that he had to hide 13 years in a cave from the Romans, and yet when it was time to deal with Xero that was coming from Rome, they sent Rajbi there, because he's Malumid bin Isim, and he was successful. So we see the same thing from Yaakov, that even though there was such great, such a great hatred, from Esav to Yaakov, but Yaakov is also Malumid bin Isim, and Yaakov was able to accomplish that Esav should have a change and come to a place that he gave Yaakov a wholehearted kiss in the moment. And the Rebbe continues and says, this fits with Rashbi in general, the Pnimis in Yanim, that we find that when they left the cave after 13 years, everywhere that they went, so Rabbi Lazar would destroy things, and Rabbi Shimon would fix them, even though the idea of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yechai is Terasa Yim Nasi, which means not to be in the world, to be above the world, but nevertheless we see that he changed and impacted the world in a good way, just like his opinion over here, 
that Esav came to a place where he gave Yaakov a wholehearted kiss. And even more than this we see by Rashbi, more than what we just mentioned, that Rashbi said, which this means that not that he'd make the world not deserving of Din, but that the world would remain deserving of Din. But he had the ability that the, that the world would be putter from that din. He would be able to accomplish that. Again, we see this idea that even though the world is where it is, he would be able to impact it in that place, which the Rebbe says in a way is greater than elevating the world. Because when the world is elevated, it enters a new state. Here Rashbi is saying that even if the world remains in its state, where it's deserving of din, he has the ability to lift us a din. And the Rebbe says that this is a lesson for all of us, that we are in... Golis Edim, that on one hand we can't rely on the Gayim. We have to know Allah. But on the other hand, a Yid has the ability to, to have an influence on Esav that even when Esav is, is in his place of Allah, even when Edim is in that place, a Yid could affect that it should be Nikhmur Rachamov. He could turn around the way that Esav deals with him in a way that Esau will provide a Yid with everything that he needs, and even more than that, to help and support a Yid in doing Torah mitzvahs. And how does this come about? This comes about when a Yid stands firmly in his Torah and mitzvahs, even when it's difficult, and he's not intimidated, and he's not bothered, and he doesn't become afraid of Goyim and Goyishkeit. And not only doesn't he become intimidated, intimidated and changed by this, he even informs Esau of this. He informs Edim of this. Like we find that Yaakov told of im loven garti v'tayag mitzvah shamati, and through this it will be fulfilled. What is in our haftarah of this week from Chazayin Avadio that Avadio was himself from Edim, but he was a ger. Again, we see the same idea that it comes from Edim, which stays in its place, but to make a complete turnaround in it. To what it says at the end of the haftarah about the coming of Mashiach.